Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to look at making these topiary shapes. But we're going to do it by creating a node group that allows us to distribute points within a mesh instead of just on its surface. Let's dive right in. We're going to need to attack this problem in two steps. The first step is to create a node group that will distribute points within a mesh. And then the second step is to simply instance leaves on those points. So to start, let's create a sphere that we can distribute some points in. This will do. And now we'll add a geometry node tree to it. To create our points, we'll use the point points node, and we'll do a join geometry between it and our incoming geometry. To make it easier to group these together later, let's go ahead and put our points node in a group of its own. And we'll set the number of points that we want to create to 100. Back inside this node group, we're going to remove these two connections for now. Right now we have 100 points created right at the center. We want to distribute them randomly. We can do this by simply plugging in a utilities random value node, set to vector, and plugged into the position. Of course, right now, they're only being distributed between the point 000 and the point 111. So we have this little cube of points being created. We'd like these to be spread out over the entire sphere. We can get the size of our entire sphere by using a geometry bounding box node. We'll plug it into the input and then plug the minimum and the maximum into our random value. So now, the minimum value for our points will be the minimum of our bounding box, and the maximum will be the maximum. Going back out to the top layer, we'll plug in our geometry to this node. If we turn up the point count, we have a nice box of points. Going back into our node group, let's move the geometry up to the top of this input, as that's pretty standard. Another thing we'll want to do here is to be able to change the seed of this random value so we can have a little bit of artistic control later. So we'll simply attach the seed to the input. So now that we have points both inside and outside of the sphere, our next step is going to be to delete the points that are outside. Of course, to delete points, we'll use the geometry, delete geometry node. But the question is, how are we going to determine which points we want to delete? If we were sticking with simple things like rectangles or spheres, we could simply use a distance or a bounding box to delete them. But instead, we're going to have to use some math. This setup that we're about to look at works most of the time. If you have meshes with an extreme pointiness in areas, or you have meshes that aren't manifold, or have inconsistent normals, this method probably won't work well. So make sure you have nice watertight meshes with all the normals facing outwards. The idea behind what we want to do is if we have a point right here, we're gonna look at the nearest face. We'll then look at the nearest position on that face and create a vector. We'll also look at the normal of that face. If this normal n and this vector v are pointing in the same direction, the dot product of these two vectors will be positive. Otherwise, it'll be negative. So in a best case scenario, if our point is on the positive side of its nearest face, we can use that information to determine if a vector from our face to our point is going in the same direction as the face normal, and therefore is on the outside of that mesh. Let's see how that looks. We'll need to transfer some attributes from our mesh in order to make these comparisons. So we'll add an attribute transfer attribute node. What we needed first was a point on the nearest face. So since position is a vector, we'll change this to vector. We'll bring down our geometry and we'll add in an input position node and plug this into the attribute. So now we can use this to find out for any given point that we've created. So we can use this attribute now for any given point to find the location of the nearest face. So again, say our point is here and the nearest position on the face is here. We'll call this point A and this point B. 
If we subtract point B from point A, we'll get this vector. So we'll use a vector math node, set it to subtract, and we'll subtract the value on the face, which is point B, from our point value, which we can get by plugging the position straight into this socket. Because it's bypassing this transfer attribute node, this position will actually go with whatever geometry is down this line instead of what's coming through here. So now this vector coming out of the subtract is this vector V. Another thing we'll want to do is go ahead and normalize this vector. We'll duplicate our subtract node and change the function to normalize. That just means our vector is now a length of one. The next thing we need is the normal coming off of this face. We can simply use another transfer attribute node, hook it into the same geometry, but instead of using the position input, we're going to use the normal input. Now, if we add a vector math node and set it to dot product, we can compare these two vectors. We don't have to normalize the normal vector because a normal vector is already normalized. So now, if these two vectors are pointing in the same direction, this value will be positive. If they're exactly perpendicular, it will be zero, and if they're facing in opposite directions, it will be negative. So we can compare to this value to see if we want to delete any given point. So if we take this value and use a greater than node, we can compare them. What we want to delete are any points where the dot product is positive because they're on the positive side of the faces. So saying greater than zero means that this dot product is positive and that's what we want to delete. So we'll plug that into selection. So now all of the points that were outside of our sphere have been deleted. If we take part of our sphere and move it around, you'll see our points move with it. Now I said before, if parts of your mesh have very sharp angles in them, this can start having problems. If I pull this section downwards, you can see here along this edge, we start to get issues. One thing that I found is if that I lower this comparison, many times that can compensate for those problem areas without deleting too many of the other points within your mesh. So because of that, I'm going to plug in this threshold to our group input. Because I didn't use position or radius, I'll remove those from my input. We've got geometry, point count, we'll move this threshold up and leave seed at the bottom. If I tab out of this node, we now have a node that can create points inside of a mesh. We'll name this node points in mesh and we'll mark this as an asset. We'll delete this mesh and add in something more interesting. For this example, we're going to use a torus knot. Why? Because I just like them. We'll add a node tree and add a group points in mesh node. We'll give it a bunch of points and it looks like our threshold is just fine here. Let's go ahead and bring it up to zero to see how it does. Looks like we're still good. If we change the seed, we can see what kind of results we get. Now that we have this node, let's go ahead and add our leaves. I'm going to use the import images as planes plugin, which you should probably activate if you haven't already. It does come with Blender. And I'm going to load an image of a leaf that I got from a Google image search. Next, I'll adjust my mesh so that the object origin of my mesh is down here at the stem. I'll add in a little bit of geometry, select all, and do an unwrap. I'll go over to UV editing and line this up nicely. Finally, I'll give this a little bit of shape. There, that'll be good for now. We'll go ahead and hide this. And now, back in our geometry nodes, we'll do an instance on points. The thing we want to instance is our leaf object, so we'll drag that in from the outliner, set it to relative, and plug it into instance. Next, we're going to need to give this some randomness. We'll add a utilities random value node, set it to vector, and we'll plug this one into scale. This way we'll get leaves of multiple sizes. Of course, we don't want to go all the way down to zero, so we'll bring this up just a little bit. 
and maybe bring the max down just a hair. We'll duplicate this random value and we'll plug it into the rotation. We'll bring the minimum down and the maximum up until we're happy with the results. We'll tweak the size some more and then from here we can play with the point count until we get something we're happy with. So anyhow, I hope this video gives you some great ideas and I hope the points in mesh node opens up a whole new realm of possibilities for you. So thanks for watching. I hope this video inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.